Hey there everybody, it's Mark Crowley. I'm back with another video. Today I'm going to be doing an overview of male human anatomy, especially body proportions. Uh, and uh, to prepare for that, I've put down uh, five lines here, which really divide four separate spaces. Now, people like to know the size I'm working at. Um, it turns out that it's a, a little under seven and three quarters uh, inches, uh, which comes out to 19 and a half centimeters, kind of uh, random, but I was trying to fit as much as I could into the video frame, basically, is what that comes down to. No need to replicate those measurements exactly. Uh, as long as you get one uh, space, that is the comfortable height, you divide it in half, then you divide both of those in half, uh, you're going to be working with the same system that I'm working with. Now, uh, I'm going to begin by drawing just a basic uh, guideline for the head. So here you see I've drawn the head in a three-quarter point of view, and uh, basically it is a little more than half of one of these uh, quadrants, let us just call them. And uh, what that means, of course, is that uh, this character is going to be a little less than um, uh, eight heads tall. In fact, he really comes much closer to seven heads tall. Now, uh, in traditional body proportion instruction, we uh, often hear people talking about how many heads tall is the figure, and, you know, it's a useful measurement, but I decided not to do it for this uh, video because the truth is when you sit down to draw a character, are you really going to sit there and draw eight heads or whatever and then start drawing? I don't think most people do that. Really, I think it's a little more, you know, doable to think in terms of, let's get a line for the top of the head, let's get one line for the uh, bottom of the heel, Let's split that in half. At the very least, you can do that, right? Figure out where the halfway point is, and then I think it's helpful to split both of those in half. Uh, much more doable than trying to draw seven heads or something as a guideline. Uh, anyway, that's my theory, and uh, I hope people <laughs> will find it useful as we progress through this video. But I'm going to go ahead now and continue drawing a sort of uh, stick figure skeletal structure. Um, let's continue down, and I'll do uh, sort of a line for the spine and uh, for the shoulders. Okay, so I decided to go ahead and put in a line here for sort of the pelvis. All of these are kind of imaginary lines in a way. You will eventually not see them, but they're good for building the basic structure that we're going to work from. Uh, now notice that uh, the way I've drawn it, uh, the, this line for the shoulders is tilted a little. That's because I'm trying to do a little more of a naturalistic pose. Sometimes when teaching anatomy, we see this sort of police lineup kind of dead on straight looking um, uh, illustration, which is, you know, helpful, I suppose, but uh, I wanted to show how proportions look in real life when you see someone standing there. Uh, and so that's why you're going to see things that are a little, you know, like one foot coming a little past this line and so forth, just to make it look, look a little more natural. So uh, I guess you want to notice the width of the shoulders, depending on how broad you want to make them. I'd say the point from here to here is a, a quite a bit less than uh, the top of the head down to the chin. And uh, otherwise, maybe it's time for us to move on to, uh, well, I'll go ahead and draw the legs and then we'll move on to the arms after that. So you can see the way things work out, if you divide things into fours, uh, the, both the knees and the, this line of the pelvis come in just a little bit above uh, those two lines. And then, of course, you know, the basis of this line is the bottom of the heel uh, here. And you can see that I've got the one foot pointing off in this direction. This other foot's going to be pointing more directly toward us. Again, part of getting more of a natural looking pose. Uh, but you'll notice that the line here between the ankle and the knee, uh, close to the same uh, length, maybe this uh, thigh line is just a touch longer. Uh, but uh, let's go ahead now and uh, draw the lines uh, of the arms. So, uh, as you can see, I've put a little bit of a bend in the elbow here, and that is uh, natural, you know, when someone's standing, and, uh, you know, not so much about proportions, but maybe about just drawing a good standing pose. Uh, when someone's arms are hanging down, very often there's just a little bend at the elbow. Um, uh, and happily, this uh, top part of uh, the wrist of the hand is coming in right around that midway point, so that's another thing. If, you, if the character you're drawing has at least one um, arm at his side coming straight down, then that can help you figure out where to start the hand. Uh, the, and then the tips of the fingers, if they are kind of just very lightly curled down, 
uh, are going to come right in here around mid thigh. And um, as we continue sort of adding meat <laughs> to the bones here, uh, we'll get a better idea of, of where the hand um, ends up in relation to the leg. So, uh, speaking of uh, putting meat on the bones, it's time for us to do that. Let's go ahead and, uh, well, I think I'll get at least the lines of the neck, maybe the necks and, and the shoulders in place. So you can see here the width of the neck. I'm drawing a fairly athletic guy, so um, if you don't want a, a muscle-bound fellow, I guess you'd make the neck a little narrower than that. But uh, the slope of the shoulder is very important. I've got a whole separate video on that. I'm going to link to a whole bunch of videos. Uh, in the info box, or the uh, description, I guess I should call it, um, of all the various things like the face, the shoulders, the, um, uh, the hands, the feet, and so forth. Um, uh, but uh, this is just a quick overview video. Notice this, it almost looks like he's wearing a thick sweater or something, but this is actually the collarbone, and I will be refining that uh, quite a bit more as we go along. But you can see the beginnings uh, of the, um, the biceps, the uh, upper arms here, and so I think it uh, may be natural to continue with that. Although, actually, why don't, you know, first I'll get uh, uh, the uh, facial features, uh, maybe some indications of the hair and so forth, uh, and then we'll move on to the arms next. Okay, so, you know, drawing the human face, a whole different uh, video, series of videos, and indeed, like I said, I'm going to link to uh, videos that focus exclusively on that. But notice how, you know, I had that initial uh, guideline in place. The eyes uh, in realistic anatomy are kind of right exactly between the chin and the top of the head. Um, the mouth uh, always a little closer to the nose uh, than to the chin. The ears tend to start right around the eyes or the eyebrows and extend down to the bottom of the nose. So a few quick guidelines there. Uh, but let's go ahead now and move on to drawing the arms. All right, so I've uh, sort of simplified things here. Later on in real time, I'll be refining this into the sort of area of the deltoid up here, uh, the biceps, maybe a hint of the uh, triceps on the back there. Um, but otherwise, you see the way the muscles are coming in, it, they're a little bit higher up than where the uh, elbow is. That's some, um, you know, something you can keep in mind in terms of uh, beginning to get the basic guidelines of the muscles in place. I'm always paying attention to the narrowness of the uh, wrists in relation to the rest of the arm. Don't want them to be too thick down there. And uh, basically, yeah, let's move on and draw uh, the muscles of the chest and the abdomen. All right, well, lots to cover here. Uh, the main thing is to get a, a vertical line here that really becomes the dividing line of the chest. And you'll see that I began erasing away some of those skeletal guidelines, what I earlier uh, referred to as imaginary lines, because in a way they really are. They, they just get you started. Uh, and now we get more into the realm of, um, you know, things based on real anatomy that you're going to see in the final drawing. And getting in this vertical line, uh, because he's turned a little in space, it's shifted off. Uh, to the right just a little. That's going to help you begin to organize uh, the other various lines. Notice that this sort of line of the armpit here is coming in right around that first quadrant. Uh, so that's a helpful guideline there. Um, and, uh, you know, I'm going to be refining these muscles quite a lot, but really it's the underside of the uh, pectorals, the pecs. <laughs> do I do my Arnold here for the pecs? Uh, terrible Arnold, really, you really need to work on that. But I'm erasing away even just a little here. As I studied photos, I noticed that the real, you know, the pecs uh, tend to get uh, defined quite a lot uh, on the lower edges towards the uh, outside part of the chest, less defined uh, as you reach the uh, mid part. Uh, but again, we'll be getting more into that and the, the navel and the six-pack muscles and all that stuff later on. But uh, I did draw a line here that really is just sort of like the upper swimsuit line, I guess you would call, uh, not related to um, the anatomy, but it can sort of help you uh, in terms of uh, getting some of these lines in the right place, this line that you imagine as the real waistline of, of clothing. And just above it, I believe it's called the adenus belt, uh, the V-line. Uh, people who are in really good shape, they get quite defined here, these two lines. And uh, getting those, uh, as I said, coming right in there. If you don't want to base it on this uh, guideline, I suppose you just look at the, the quadrants that I put in earlier, and it's about, what, one-third, maybe, from that bottom line. Anyway, enough of me gabbing on. Let's go ahead and get in uh, the lines uh, of the legs. So 
So again, I've erased uh, some of those uh, earlier lines to, just for clarity's sake. And uh, yeah, again, you see the knee coming in just above uh, this lower quadrant line. Very helpful in terms of placing uh, the knee, although the back of the knee, well, I guess it is sort of at the same uh, point there. Uh, but again, similar to the arms coming down to the wrists, you're, you've got the widest, strongest part of the legs and the thighs, and then kind of tapering off as we come down near the ankles. I'll be refining this quite a lot as well um, during the real-time section that we're getting real close to, frankly. But um, basically the main thing here is to um, uh, keep in mind the the width of the thighs relative to the calf, I'd say it's like, I don't know, a good third wider uh, in terms of, uh, you know, like a, an athletic person. Uh, and uh, beyond that, I suppose it's time for us to, well, you know what I need to do is refine these hands just a little bit. Uh, and then maybe we'll be able to uh, move into the real time part of the video. Yeah, just trying to get the basic uh, guidelines of, um, you know, relaxed hands dropping down at the sides here. And now I think it's time to refocus the camera. Don't want to forget about that, uh, as I did in my <laughs> earlier video. Uh, but I'm going to refocus the camera so that we can uh, do real-time drawing and work through, basically from head to toe, uh, refining this and uh, getting it to look like a, uh, you know, a real human body, hopefully in proper proportions. All right, well, I'm going to try to keep things moving here. You know, this video just threatens to become a monster length <laughs> video just because it's covering basically everything, you know. And if I sit here talking about how to draw the hair and so forth and the fingernails, <laughs> it's going to be just a, a, a three-hour uh, snooze fest. So anyway, I'm going to zip through this and maybe as I do uh, give some pointers, you know, uh, th I'm not doing a, a super realistic uh, drawing style here. It is, it is definitely going to have a little bit of a um, manga-ish uh, flair to it, uh, hopefully. Um, but I wanted to point out about how, you know, you got to exercise caution with some of these uh, anatomy lessons that you see. Um, uh, a very common people will say that, uh, you know, a, a male figure is eight heads tall. And, you know, as I studied photographs and did a reality check on that, I found that that was not necessarily the case. Maybe basketball players, extraordinarily tall people might be eight heads tall. I found that seven heads tall, I mean, even people would say seven and a half is closer to the norm. I found even less than that seemed to be um, more realistic. But anyway, you can sort of play around with these things. And if you feel that at the end of this uh, lesson that this guy's head looks... Uh, too big for his body, or indeed that you want him to look taller, then you reduce the size of the uh, head, and uh, he will certainly look much, much taller. Uh, anyway, I don't want to spend too much time talking about uh, all that. In fact, you can say, hey, he didn't talk about the facial features at all, but as, <laughs> as I said, I've got a, a whole other videos that uh, are relating specifically to uh, drawing the facial features in way more detail. Uh, than is possible in this video. So let's move on to drawing the neck. Uh, and uh, what I'm going to do is put in a sort of a V-shaped line here for the tendons coming down around the Adam's apple. Very visible um, with muscular male characters. Generally, um, you know, when you're drawing a female character, these lines uh, are rarely drawn in a really dramatic way. Although, depending on the lighting in photographs, you can some, uh, see on some women's necks that the tendons and so forth uh, are quite visible. Uh, in any case, um, uh, notice how the, these lines of the neck come in front of these muscles that uh, go around the back. That's something that I never really noticed until I started studying it. And uh, interestingly, uh, especially on muscular people, people who are really fit, you will indeed see this collarbone which sort of, like I said, looks almost like a sweater or something, it does uh, very often interrupt the contour of the shoulder, at least from a certain point of view. So um, I decided to go ahead and put that in there. And, and I always thought that this came down and connected like this, but I, I believe that is not the case. It is, in fact, uh, just something that kind of comes down here and then starts again over here, and that it is not the bone does not necessarily... Uh, connect here in a visible way. 
Um, now, uh, I don't know about you all, but I uh, have trouble sometimes figuring out how the, uh, the pecs here uh, connect with the deltoids. Um, and so, you know, uh, as I studied photographs, again, of like swimmers and so forth, um, I found, and also looking actually at diagrams of the musculature underneath the skin, which is of course important, um, that uh, the deltoids are really coming over here like so. And um, this line that you see me putting in here is sort of uh, indicating uh, the uh, pecs that the muscles really stretch out like this. Now, unless someone's really emaciated, you're not going to see those lines, but it may be helpful for you to think about that, that that's what's causing um, maybe a little bit of a line to become visible up here, that the muscles stretch horizontally, whereas here you've got a little more of a vertical or sort of diagonal thing going on. Anyway, um, the biceps in front and I guess the triceps in back and uh, superhero drawings will very often sort of delineate those two in real life, except for, you know, bodybuilders and stuff. Uh, pretty rare to see that defined so clearly, at least in, you know, I was looking at uh, photos of like swimmers and stuff who are like in really good shape. But I didn't see, like, lines right there <laughs> uh, delineating that. Anyway, I hope I'm not uh, spreading misinformation there. But I'm going to go ahead and put the um, an indication of the uh, elbow in here. Um, very often there's lots of muscles spreading across the forearm area. I don't want to get too far into that, but I'll go ahead and just maybe put one or two lines uh, in that area. Um, maybe getting some sort of a hint of... Uh, the bottom of the bicep in place might be. See, it's already starting to look weird to me, so I'm gonna <laughs> I'm gonna backpedal furiously on that one and and uh, not have uh, lines going across the upper arm. Um, so anyway, as I said, uh, doing drawing the pecs, drawing the pecs, you have to first of all pump iron every day. <laughs> I thought I promised I wasn't going to do that anymore. <laughs> anyway, I'm going to actually erase a little bit of this central line that, that was so important earlier. Uh, and uh, maybe show that the pecs do on some, you know, people sort of separate a bit visibly. And you can kind of see um, a gap there between the two muscles. Again, depending on how fit somebody is. And so I thought I would get that into shape. And um, if someone's been working out a lot, uh, I find, in, again, in photographs that uh, the uh, male nipples sort of descend down to the bottom, uh, bottoms of the uh, pecs and become a little less visible. They're not up here in the middle where you might imagine them to be. Um, those of you who are, like, into bodybuilding and stuff, maybe you can confirm my theory that it is related to how much, uh, how fit you are, and if you are doing a lot of exercise, that those, um, that the location almost seems to change. Hope I'm not wrong about that. Hope I'm not wrong about everything in this video. <laughs> Let's go ahead and, well, you see me defining the, uh, the deltoids here. Um, one thing I always notice about the bicep is that it is, uh, very straight and long, whereas the, the shoulder muscle, the deltoid, sort of curves a lot. And this one, uh, as I s have studied over the years, I always notice how straight it is. Almost like a piston on, on machinery or something like that. Uh, so, see if that helps as a, as a guideline. Boy, it looks like I messed up the paper here or something. <laughs> staining it. Um, let's go ahead and put the navel in place, and I'm actually going to relate it to this line here, although I guess maybe the uh, adenus belt is a better thing for you to think of, but uh, if indeed you've decided to put in this sort of waistline here, you want to go up just about that much. Uh, I'd say it's about, well, maybe closer to like a quarter between the pecs and this line. Again, it's sort of an imaginary line, so I don't know <laughs> how much you want to uh, rely on that, but uh, anyway, uh, this is where the navel is going to go. And then I noticed, uh, you know, I've got a whole separate video on the muscles of the chest. I'm kind of uh, quickly covering, recovering that material in this video, but uh, here's the uh, uh, <clears throat> world famous six pack that men um, either have or wish they had. 
<laughs> guess which care, which category I fall into. Um, but uh, what I noticed as I studied, again, this was sort of like the uh, anatomy books and the musculature underneath the skin, that uh, the, you get these, the one, two, three, four, five, six kind of muscles up here, and then down here below the navel, you should not be putting in any more of those lines because uh, if what I studied was correct, uh, these are just a uh, single or two muscles that do not get any further definition below the navel. So that's something uh, that I noticed there. Anyway, um, maybe quickly talk a bit about these muscles that come across the edge of the uh, rib cage. They sort of look like um, gills almost, or like uh, the scales on a fish or something, but indeed you have sort of musculature that's weaving, uh, joining uh, at that point, and uh, it will become fairly visible, you know, even in photographs. Um, so that maybe takes care of that. I want to be careful that I don't do as I have done in the past and start drawing outside of the frame. Let's go ahead and refocus so that I can... Well, you know, before I do that, I'm just going to say that, uh, again, muscular people, people who've been working out a lot, you, you will probably see uh, more lines in here, tendons, sinewy, <laughs> strong, steel-like muscles here uh, up in the shoulder area. It gets quite complex, and I must confess, I, I can't sit here and start naming these various muscles. Not at this stage, but uh, hopefully I will continue with my studies and be back to talk about that in greater depth someday. Let's go ahead and refocus the camera and start drawing. Well, it's going to end up being both the legs and the hands, I guess. All right, so I'm going to quickly draw the hands. Uh, I have a lot of videos about hands. I'm guessing at least four or five by this point about how to draw hands. Um, and there will be more, no doubt. But I'm just going to go ahead and put in the indications of the fingers here. Uh, always useful to note that the middle finger is the longest. And then all the other fingers sort of recede. And I'm uh, trying to get a, the right angle in here for where the... Um, sort of thumb side of the hand comes off of the wrist. That is a, a fairly pronounced angle and it can be helpful to you know, pay attention to that. And there is sort of like a, a bone that becomes visible over here on the wrist. I hope I'm getting that in the right place. Looks a little weird to me. <laughs> but anyway. Let's quickly move on. Uh, over here, uh, uh, actually I kind of already had this mostly defined. Um, maybe get a little extra line in there of sort of tendons around the, uh, the wrist, the wristal region. And um, yeah, when hands are just dropped at your sides and relaxed, they do sort of curl just a little bit naturally. For you to sort of stand there with your hands extended is not really relaxing. It's, uh, I think in, in a relaxed state, they do sort of curve a little. Anyway, um, let's draw the knees and then sort of organize things based on the knees. Um, uh, this line here, uh, the, the lower quadrant line, is helping us to place both of them. Of course, he's turned at a little bit of an angle, so the knees are in slightly different places. This one being almost entirely above that line. This one maybe being a little more centered on it. Um, people who are very fit and muscular, I know I keep referring to that, but uh, it, it has to be said not everybody has mu these muscles so visible. Uh, anyway, you're going to see above the knee... Uh, musculature there that sort of helps define. It's not a line for the knee itself, but the muscle above it. And then um, sometimes you can sort of see the, the knee divide into two parts, I think, based on these two uh, bones as they join together there. But uh, I'm trying to take care to get this one just a little higher up, just because he's turned in space. He's in space! Dude, I'm drawing him in space! <laughs> he's turned a little bit away from us and... Uh, uh, that is going to cause everything that you draw here to be just a little bit shifted higher. Um, now, superhero drawings very often will get in this line here for a uh, muscle that goes across the thigh. Sorry, I don't know the name of it. Uh, bodybuilders, I'm sure you do. Let me know in the comment section. I really should have studied that, but uh, it is sort of a visible line, uh, again, on people who are uh, muscular. 
in a visible way. Um, I noticed in photographs that uh, in this pose that uh, a, a muscle would be, became visible right over here near the edge. Hope I'm getting that right. Uh, and that the muscle uh, of the thigh kind of crossed in front of this muscle at the, of the calf, at least from this point of view. And then uh, sort of a bone, the shin, right, that comes right across the front here, that can be sort of an organizing line that helps you sort of finish off the bottom part of the legs. Um, you might get a line in here to sort of define those muscles of the calf, of the calves as they come up around. Now, one thing I noticed uh, is that the ankles are uh, can be visible on both sides, but they're not in exactly the same spot. I believe the interior uh, ankle is a little higher up and the exterior ankle a little lower down. Feet are so hard to draw and uh, I have at least two um, videos devoted to feet. I'm just going to have to really have a link fest in the description of this video that links to all these various uh, uh, you know anatomy videos that I've done in the past. But just very quickly to kind of finish this off, the big toe, they don't call it the big toe for nothing. It is big. It is way bigger than those other toes. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and uh, make sure that uh, that is reflected in this illustration. Of course, the, uh, the little toe, again, they call it that for a reason. It's tiny, sometimes almost um, not visible, depending on things you're looking at. You can see me struggling to make this look good. I think for sometimes the feet almost seem even harder than the hands. They just, the shape is so undefined. As an artist, you almost have to sort of fake it and start putting in definition where there is none in real life. It just has such a potato-ish, blobby kind of look to it. If you study photographs and you sit there trying to copy the photographs and you still end up with something that just doesn't look right. So maybe time for me to do another um, another video about feet just to help me get better at drawing them. That happens with these videos. You know, as I do a video about any subject and uh, by the time I'm done with it, I've, I've actually learned a thing or two. So I should be thanking you people, really. And here we come over to this other foot, seen from a different point of view, so it's going to... Uh, I find this point of view much easier to draw. I, w I don't know if everyone has that same experience, but I, from the side, I just find that the shape becomes more clearly defined, easier for me to understand as an artist. And it just... it looks good faster. Whereas with this, I feel like I'm just really killing myself trying to... <laughs> I just want to erase it and start all over again. Um, let's go ahead and get the uh, interior ankle, as I said, a little higher up. and We can't see the other side of it. Um, but if we could, it would be a little lower down. And down here, yeah, thankfully, maybe part of why it's easier is you don't have to draw those toes. They're sort of hidden from view, largely. And there you have it. I think we've reached the uh, glorious end of this video on drawing um, body proportions. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and pull out my trusty black Prismacolor and uh, do final line work, refocus the camera so you see the entire image. And then uh, once I'm done with that, I'll be back with a few final words. <laughs> Here's my video on uh, body proportions for a male character. I'll definitely do one for a female character uh, as well, but uh, probably not next week. I don't like to do the same type of video two weeks in a row. Let's just say that I will get to it for sure uh, in the months ahead. But for now, let me thank anyone who has supported me by getting any of my books like Brody's Ghost and Mickey Falls, my two uh, graphic novel series, as well as The Realism Challenge, my how to draw book that teaches about hyper-realism, and of course, Mastering Manga and
and Mastering Manga 2, my uh, How to Draw Manga style books. Really always super grateful to anyone who supports me by getting those books. But let me go ahead and lay down this pencil. I want to thank you all for watching this video. I hope you found it useful, and I'll be back with another one real soon.